Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia. Uh, summary for the day of 34, 34 of the Russo-Ukrainian War and uh, it's for the 29th of March, basically it was yesterday uh, and very yesterday for me already, so because it's already uh, 1pm for me in Singapore. Uh, I didn't post any quick updates because there is nothing worth posting. Uh, and I was sleeping most of the time and I, I think I was, I'm quite burned out so and uh, luckily there isn't really much despite I did actually spend like the past I don't know 4-5 hours digging through all the information and there isn't really much information uh, that does not mean there's no fighting uh, it's just that uh, there is no progress seemingly so uh, we can we'll start off with uh, some missile strikes uh, you know there is it's a slow news day when I talk about missile strikes. So uh, the Russians hit another oil depot, this time at Clevan, uh, in Rivne, uh, using cruise missiles. So if I can scroll in and take, you can take a look. This is Clevan and then uh, there is this oil depot that was uh, struck. And then uh, there is also another missile strike on the airbase at Starokonstantinov. So it's here, Staro Konstantinov, and then uh, so this is a very interesting air base with a uh, hidden uh, camouflage uh, bunker of sort, and a uh, very nice planes parking here in the this GPS shot. So the target uh, is reportedly the fuel and lubricants again. The Russians have been uh, seemingly exclusively trying to strike all the fuel storage and uh this, so according to that this russian source so the mayor of Staro Konstantinov, uh in the kimenitsky region reported missile strike on the airfield in the west of the city so according to him west of the city this is east oh my god never mind uh, then uh according to him all collector stock of fuel and lubricants were destroyed so in another Russian source that I saw is that they they have been trying very hard the the the, the way how the Russian source that message wrote was that they actually tried very hard to collect those stock of uh, fuel and lubricant and it's now destroyed. So uh so this this also added that uh, since the beginning of the operation the uh this airbase have been the target of uh, multiple attacks already. So it's not surprising because it's a major airfield it seems. So, and uh, while you think this, oh man, this is so pro-Russian, I have, I give you a Ukrainian one. So, uh, Ukraine allegedly, this one is not confirmed, uh, allegedly strikes on the ammunition depot in uh, Ot Otyabrisky, uh in Belgorod region. This is within Russia. So, so I actually do not know where is the, this location that was hit. Uh, because there's just a lot of farms and uh, doesn't look nothing looks really very part particularly uh, obvious to me. So I just anyhow put this icon. So according to the RIA Novosti, which is uh, I think it's a Russian government uh, media, they said that uh, the cause of the explosion is due to human factor, so human error. Uh, according to the Russian source, they say the pre preliminary information is a ballistic missile fired by the Ukrainian armed forces at a ammunition depot. So uh, no no confirmation as to why this explode. Uh, there are videos uh, you can check out at the DPA telegram. Information is in the description below. Uh, you, I actually I think I, I think I shared the video of the explosion. It's just it's, it looks like some firework. So uh, from afar. So the video is quite far away. So anyway, uh, in terms of the front lines, I have nothing. So, so uh, what I do know is that there is a this report from the Russian sources that th there is a force from the Ukrainians moving from Posaparovsky towards Alexandrivka. So halfway there, they got struck uh, by I think they they got hit by I think drones or missiles or something like that. So they were detected and then they got attacked and then they. I think destroyed three three infantry fighting vehicles and then they retreated. So uh so I can't I can't really I 
put something here because I don't really put icons on asteroids. So, but let you know that there is this attempt to move this way, which is kind of weird because uh, these two towns are supposedly liberated or captured by the Ukrainians. They could have moved from here to here. Somehow this force moved from here to here. Like, it's not like, it's not, it's not like this is near, you know, it's like 25 kilometers. So moving through open territory, uh, I don't know. I don't know what to believe. So basically, uh, this is just, uh, just, just rumor. Put it as just rumor. Okay. Um, no news regarding Mariupol. Uh, so there is this, uh, tweet that shows a so-called, so-called, uh, Azov battalion commander being, uh, arrested. Uh, but I can't verify because it doesn't feel correct. And then, then I did share and then a pro-Ukrainian guy say I'm an idiot. Say that that was actually from years ago. So yeah, so I'm an idiot for asking and dubbing, dubbing the video, which is kind of hilarious also. Anyway, uh, they just show the class, you know, the class of people. Uh, no news regarding everywhere. There's literally no news. Uh, so there's nothing else. So, so since there's nothing else, so what is the most significant thing that happened yesterday was actually the negotiation in Turkey. And uh, I just want to talk about this. You can actually go to defensepoliticalasia.com slash Ukraine and, uh, and you can be able to look this web page with the, the map is here. You can this is the exactly the same map that I use. You can uh, check it out. Uh, just so before I go to this thing, I want to show you that you can actually click this button. Ta da! You can actually see the previous days uh, stuff. Ta da! And ta da! Then you can. So I added day one seven fifteen and twenty five. Uh, so you can kind of see the progress a bit. Uh. Uh, there's a limitation. There's only I can only have ten layers of uh stuff. So so means that I cannot put only put ten days. So which is why you know that most the all the other days are, are deleted already. I do have a record of all of them. So I did save them down. So uh, yeah, that's that. So moving down. So I have added into the situation overview the uh, demands by the Russians as, uh, as well as the demands by the Ukrainians in terms of the, their negotiations. So this is as of 29th of March, which is yesterday. So uh, you should know, if you still don't know, you should know what is the what is the objective of the Russians. They are, they are Russians wants to uh, liberate Luhansk and Donetsk. So they demand that the, the Ukrainians recognize the independence of Luhansk and Donetsk People's Republic. So they also demand Ukraine recognize Crimea as Russian territory. They want demil dem demilitarization of uh, Ukraine to only defensive weaponry and no offensive weaponry. So they can only have a defensive military. And they must declare neutral status and do not join any military alliance or blocs like NATO. So they do. They did have a compromise. They will allow Ukraine to join the European Union, uh, but they cannot join NATO. Only the European Union, and uh, and they have compromised by this. Es they call it a uh, this escalation of military activities in some part of Ukraine, particularly, uh, dramatically at Chernihiv and Kiev front. I want to emphasize this is this escalation this is not withdrawal so i i've seen a lot of uh, the pro-ukrainian folks you know getting very excited and saying yeah you see russia is losing the war that's that's why they are now withdrawing they need to they need more troops in the other fronts and stuff like that there is no absolutely no indication other than the the americans saying that uh, there seems to the russian seems to be pulling back some forces uh there is no indication from my point from my point of view that the russians are retreating in any form of way in the northern front not at all in fact i what i saw was a video of them uh, showing off the dark in position at a uh, hostomel they actually have trenches you no know, and are uh, very nice quarters within uh, the 
the entrenched position in Hostamel. That's what they are actually actually showing off. That is actually a signal that they are they are staying. They are not retreating. So you have to understand logically speaking. You see this this entire area. You know how hard it was for them to fight this place and how hard it was to resupply all these forces. How many people have died uh, in to resupply the front lines and you know get caught by all this ambush, this convoy ambush. Do you think they will retreat from this area and allow the Ukrainians to re-establish entrenchment much like how they did in the east eastern front? Of course, they're not going to do that. There's stupidity, right? That, is, it, that makes no logical sense. Why would you, you know, give up all this, all this advance and allow the Ukrainians to re, uh, reorganize themselves, get more troops from Kiev and Shannon Heath and all these uh, lockdown places, and then to reform new forces and re-entrench re, re themselves along this line to, to, pro to defend against uh, another attack? It makes no logical sense at all. Not to mention the military, the soldiers that are serving here will will get extremely unhappy because they have lost brother in arms, their buddies, their friends in this in this offense. Some of them have died horribly, some have some are arrested or caught. They are not gonna be happy about a general withdrawal from this northern front. It's not happening and I don't think it's happening. It makes no no military sense and that will only free up forces that Ukrainian forces from here to reinforce the Eastern Front, which they were, they are still continue fighting. So, so stop dreaming. This is not real. Stop, stop fantasizing about you know the Russians are losing the war. So, going. So this is the Russian side. We look at the Ukrainian demands. So the Ukrainians, based on what was revealed yesterday by their spokesperson, is a bunch of fantasy as well. Much like how how I'm saying all these pro Ukrainian people that thinking that the Russians are losing the war. It's not happening. So this is also not, not exactly what happened. So the first is the most significant one. They demand a NATO Article 5 type of security guarantee. So they wanted the guarantors to be Russia, UK, China, US, Turkey, France, Canada, Italy, Poland, and Israel. Basically, every everyone with a significant military. And then they, they demand, they demand uh, that if there's any military operations, uh, against Ukraine, these guarantors will go to war for Ukraine to to pro, to to secure to to basically uh answer the guarantee of their security. So the territory does not include Crimea and Donbass. However, according to RT, it does include some uh, there I think there's a map of some sort. It includes some part of Luhansk and Donetsk. So I believe this is actually based on the territory that they are holding at this current juncture. So, which is why it does have some some part of Luhansk and Donetsk. And uh, they don't want they they want the Russians to allow them to join the EU, the European Union. So they they want fifteen years of moratorium, basically no activities. This this is what it means by no activities on the status of uh, Crimea. And then during these 15 years, they want to negotiate the Crimea's future with Russia. And they also have to both not use military force to resolve Crimea issue. So in the compromise, they will pledge that they will not join any military alliance. They pledge not to host foreign military bases or foreign troops. If they do military exercises, they will require approval from the guarantors. And they will pledge not to seek and obtain weapon, weapons of mass destruction. That includes nuclear weapon. So this thing looks as if Ukraine still have still is like in a strong position. I I call this nonsensical. Like firstly, this is a trap for the Russians. Like literal trap. Because they first they won 15 years on Crimea. They did not talk on anything about Donbass. And then and then 15 years is a freaking long time to discuss about Crimea. A territory that the Russians have basically absorbed and already have operated as part of Russia. So they want 15 years on that. So they, so 15 years to, to create trouble so that 
so that in the event where the Russians say f off, then then they can have they can legitimately get all these other countries to go to war against Russia. And uh, and I forgot to add that all these countries are are supposed to provide uh weapons to uh Ukraine. Uh, I will add this later. Uh, in the event where uh they get invaded, so they are obligated, you know, to give weapons like what people are already doing doing for them now. So, I will add that in later to this list. And you and you see, this is the primary demands of the Russians. So, this is a contradiction to what the Russians want. So this entire negotiation is a is 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 just a waste of time. It's not happening. This is not going to happen as well. So, be because this essentially is a trap to cause a World War Three. So this is not going to happen. And uh, and apparently only some some are interested to guarantee some are just keeping quiet about this thing. Uh, as soon as they heard that, and this definitely does not uh go to uh play well with what Russian wants. The Russian basically want very simple thing: Donbas, independence, Crimea as Russian territory. This is the base, most primary uh demands that the Russian wants, and they want Ukraine to be totally neutral, and they can they shouldn't have weapons to, uh, threaten Russian interests. So, and to be honest, even even. The pledge to no don't host foreign military and all this, all this can be all these promises can be broken in an instant. Uh, so this entire if Russia Russia will agree to this, then basically they are just allow allowing Ukraine to buy more time. Um, to prepare for a new war, in the future. So I this is just a waste of time as as I have expected of this uh meeting, Be why I think so because if you have been following ukrainian propaganda or ukrainian information they have been doubling down more and more on or rather not more and more but they have been consistently um, portraying themselves as winning the war or at least they are doing so well that the russian military is uh, struggling to de defeat the ukrainians and and given that even up to today uh, Zelensky are still saying that Ukraine will not give up on any uh, territory. This is like ter territorial integrity is the utmost important to Ukraine. So this is already a signal that all these are just smoke and mirrors. These are not these are not real. This is just a game. This is just a game to waste time to at least have a decent meal in Turkey. Uh, so do not put uh any faith and and that much importance or significance to that negotiation that happened in Turkey yesterday is a it's just a grand show uh to to make Russia look like some asshole to put it that way because uh because in this way it looks it sounds as if oh you see the Ukrainians are you know giving uh really nice uh, compromises uh but this is totally ignoring what the Russians actually is in Ukraine for and not to mention that given the territorial uh, advances and how the Russians have operated there is good reason to believe that the Russians will will absorb this entire and uh, annex this entire territory entire, entire territory of Kherson and the southern southern part of uh, Zaporizhia and they want this land bridge this land corridor all the way from Crimea Crimea to Donbass area and they can link directly to uh the russian territory so i my own my opinion my analysis is that the russians is going to go for more all this say or uh, all this talk of uh, de-escalation and whatever is a trap it's a trap for the ukrainians as well so let's say the russians do not attack but their troops are still there will the ukrainians take the bait and re and move forces to other places that need more reinforcement 
then the all these cities will be lesser defended, and that will give the Russians uh opportunity to capture the the cities or to encircle it. This is one trap. The other trap, if they move the forces to other places, the forces can be destroyed in more open territory because at this moment Kharkiv and Kiev is is defended to its brink. It's extremely it's basically Mariupol, but much bigger in size and scale. So are, is the Russians are not going to invade and uh, get themselves killed uh, in urban warfare like like what they did in Mariupol because uh, this is not primary objective for them. So, but by saying that they're going to de-escalate in this area, they can, they can, you know, force or encourage Ukrainian forces to be redeployed to other places where they can be destroyed more easily. So, this is a trap as well. So, don't believe in those talk, even in the, in the Russian sources about, oh, they are going to retreat and stuff like that. It's all smoke and mirrors. These are all fake. I don't believe this is true. Uh, the 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 stake is too high for for the Russians to actually re retreat, and uh, give themselves uh strategic uh problems. So the Russians is going to go to continue to fight here. The push out of Izum is going to probably happen in a few days time, I believe, because they are probably regrouping and trying and probably fighting off any uh. Uh, pro uh, attacks from the U Ukrainian side, they're probably probably you know messing up a big force to actually punch all the way through, probably through Pavinkov and you know or through here because uh I I don't really think they will go for Slovians or Kromatos because these are heavily defend defended areas. They what they probably probably want is to encircle, and uh we will see how it goes. This is just my projection, and uh. And given the progress of the war, and given how they have given their love uh, with apostrophe, uh, with open and close apostrophe, the the love to the people here, they are they are going to keep these places. So I believe they're going to annex this area, make it a new a new republic, or a two. So we don't know. When who knows, they might actually try to capture even more territory around here. And then declare of them independence because, uh, the what it looks like is that from the words from LPR and DPR, Luhans and Donetsk, they are, they are seen to be keen on uh having a, uh, what a Crimea style uh referendum, to decide whether they want to join the Russian Federation. So if they decided if they go there, and join the Russian Federation, and effectively annex themselves to the Russians, then the Russian will still need more. Uh, more buffer buffer territory to buffer themselves against a uh, uh, increasingly anti-Russian uh, Ukraine. So, so there might be a new republic here and a new republic here, and who knows another new republic in Mykolaiv? Who knows? So this war is totally not over yet. The this negotiation is nonsensical. This this kind of guarantee is also you know asking for heaven and earth. I do not believe it makes sense and <clears throat> I don't think some of these countries are willing to you know risk war against Russia by guaranteeing a, a hard to trust Ukraine so Ukraine is is very unstable now so who want to guarantee a a country that is a get is moving towards a failed state status where everyone have weapons and then, then uh, criminals are let out of prisons and you know all these are no all these are very bad things uh, especially you know the you know some of these uh and uh news and uh information that is negative to the ukrainians are starting to leak into the mainstream media i i saw a, i saw a from the russian source that the washington post actually uh wrote a piece that is critical uh, about about the Ukrainians using the residential areas to use as a firing points. And um, I haven't saw the article. I haven't went to search for it. I haven't had time to do that. Uh, but if that is true, then uh, this uh, pro-Ukrainian uh, hype is, is definitely going to be affected. So 
I don't want to go too far about my own opinion anymore. But basically, I want to just talk about this demands from yesterday because this the big news is actually this the in terms of the battlefront. Uh, there's not a lot, so I I highly encourage people to take all this uh, with a pinch of salt. This is not sincere. This is just you know. Uh, talking from a point of uh, unreleased, unrealistic expectations. This is not answering what to Russia want. And Russia, Russia uh, they are not losing the war, as what uh, some of you are hoping. They are definitely you know, doing actually very well. Uh, and from this point onward, um, it's just going to get much, much harder for the Ukrainians. I have been reporting the Russians have been striking, you know, oil depot for like a few days already. The situation uh is gonna get very bad. I had there's a there's a there's a someone actually mentioned, I'm not sure in Discord or some a source that I saw that Odessa have already run out of fuel. But this is just a rumor. But I believe from in the next week or so we'll start to see this very often. And without fuel the Ukrainian forces will collapse very easily because you have no air defense. Your air defense all need uh the, the big the big surface to air missiles, all of them need fuel. Your radar need fuel, your tanks and armor vehicle need fuel. So you will run off heavy weapons. You but you still can have the mechanical artilleries. But I'm not sure if you can still operate the MLRS, the GRAT. So uh a lot of question marks so but of course this is a uh, just projection i have no idea maybe maybe the ukrainians have a uh, secret oil oil depots that is uh, underground and and they can still manage to continue to fight this war uh, with a lot of fuel who knows i do not know so but uh, given what the russian actions has been they are now actively taking out all the oil depot and they go they go to staff the ukrainian military of fuel so that's what's what is happening now. So I do not uh I just want to you know dampen some of your excitement regarding you no know, Ukrainian uh uh things that is going Ukrainian way is not. So anyway, this is just a summary for the for this day of uh thirty four and I will see you in the next